Fool Guide Podcast Show. The Fool Guide Podcast Show. The Fool Guide Podcast Show. Hi, and welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'll be joined by Steve Jones of Floridra, and we're going to go over the new Jandy Speedset controller with their Flow Pro VS Pump. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. So I'm joined by Steve Jones. He's the Senior Product Manager over at Floridia for pumps, filters, and valves for the residential sector. How are you doing this morning, Steve? I'm doing good, David. How about you? Doing good. The reason I brought you on here is because Jandy has an exciting new controller in the speed set, and they've also integrated it into their very popular Flow Pro pump. And I think the e-pump, is there another pump that it's on also? Yeah, we also have a, a mid-range pump um, called the VS Plus HP. So we've got the VS Flow Pro, the small compact one, the e-pump on the large side, and then in the middle of the road there is the VS Plus HP. Let's talk a little bit about the SpeedSet controller. It's going to be a direct replacement for the JP-R. So that one's is that one discontinued, or, or is that one going to still be manufactured? You know, I'm a, I'm a I'm a believer in letting the market decide. There, it does have a couple of features that SpeedSet does not have. Um, primarily, there's some um, dry contact relay controls on the back of the JEPR that we did not replicate on the SpeedSet. We're still producing it, although most of the orders are shifting over to SpeedSet. And I think the, one of the reasons why they're going to be shifting over in a large majority is the SpeedSet controller. I think it's pretty revolutionary for the industry. One of the hardest things I always thought was whenever you get a VS pump. I don't know what it was, but designing the controller seemed to be difficult and user interface with those has always been difficult. I've made a lot of tutorial videos on just turning a VS pump on and off. I mean, it's just sometimes it's that complicated with the controllers that they put on the back. So with the speed set, one of the things that we can talk about, and you could probably describe it, why don't you just tell the listeners some of the great new features that the speed set has? Yeah, sure. So. Look, we went out when we when we decided to tackle this project about three, three and a half years ago, we went out and, and talked to our customers and we said, what are your pain points? Um, you know, what, what frustrates you? And um, the number one thing people talked about first was the screen size. They're like, everybody gives us this little tiny screen to program all these different settings that we can do on variable speed pumps. So if you can fix that, you're halfway there. So we said, okay, great, we'll, we'll get you a bigger screen. The second part, we then ask, well, what's what's after that? What's your second pain point? And everyone complained about the up, down, left, right buttons that are inherently on all the all of the controllers. They said there's got to be a better way. So we came up with the with the flywheel navigation dial, and um, those two things together, people are like, look, that's 90% of our problems right there. You've just solved both of them. So that those were the the two key key pain points we looked to solve, and um, I'd, I'd like to believe we we did so. And my son does a lot of 3D printing, so the flywheels on it's on a lot of 3D printers, and I think for that to translate into the a VS pump controller, it's pretty revolutionary because the way you scroll is so much easier. The arrow keys can be really confusing. And talk about how it's mounted on the back of the pump now, because this is something new for Jandy. I don't think you've really had a controller mounted on the back of the pump for quite a while now. I mean, I think the FlowPro had the option of having it, but this is one that you're actually going to sell with the speed set mounted on the back. Yeah, so we had, yeah, you're right. We had one pump, the VS Flow Pro 1.65 that had the JEPR controller on it. That's still available. Although, again, we, we expect that uh, those sales will start to, to fade out with the introduction of the speed set. But yeah, so now we offer it on all of our pumps as an option. We, uh, I think in the industry, Jandy, the Jandy brand is known as a, a builder pump. One of the reasons why we haven't really had a controller on the back is, A, I'm going to be blunt, the JEPR is just not that great, and builders didn't want it. Um, so we saved them some money by not having them incur the cost of a controller when they didn't need it. But we, when we built SpeedSet, we, we realized, look, we heard a lot from non-Jandy customers that, look, I want an out-of-the-box experience where I drop it on the pad, hook a power, I can program it without having to buy a controller separately, having to wall mount it. I just want it out of the box, ready to go. So we did that. And then in addition, 
um, which I think we're going to talk about a little bit later, is we did um, provide a connection port on the bottom of the speed set where um, the automation systems can be connected in um, to speed set. And you get some benefits by having the speed set controller, even if you're a builder using automation. Yeah, and the controller can be turned in four different directions. Is that correct? Yeah, so tool tool free. It's just a, a simple counterclockwise turn to remove it. And then you position it in the next spot that you want it in and um, rotate it back in. We have a little cam lock uh, in there that will uh, compress an O-ring, keeps it completely watertight from um, any water getting in. There may be a few, a few installations where having it on the back of the pump is not possible. Maybe a pipe's coming right across the pump. So you do have a wall mount version available. There is a, so if you buy the speed set controller by itself, it comes with a wall mount. If you happen to buy it with the pump on board and you get it to the job site and it can't, uh, and, you know, like you said, there's some kind of an obstruction, you can buy a wall mount separately um, just by itself. Um, so I'd recommend that, you know, all, all service people that out there have, you know, one of those on their, on their truck in case that is needed. Yeah, let's talk about the programming of the pump with the flywheel. And I found this to be one of the things that was so simple. I I talked to you just before we started how complicated it is for a lot of pumps to even just program a schedule, you know, or delete a schedule or change something. So touch a little bit on the ease of programming with the flywheel and with the speed set. Yeah. So again, with the with the large screen, the, the combination of the large screen and the flywheel navigation dial really makes everything a breeze. So for people who, who haven't seen it, um, when David talks about the, the flywheel, not only do you use that to um, navigate through the different menus, but it's also uh, the enter button. You, you press it and then you can go into an edit mode in different fields. It's a simple turn to in increase numbers, uh, counterclockwise turn to decrease numbers. You press the dial to enter the information and then you scroll to the next field. With that combined with the large screen, just about everything is at your visual, like right, right in front of you when you're when you're doing programming. So, for example, setting up priming, you go into the priming menu. There's only two things to set up: speed and duration. They're both there right in front of you. There's no scrolling through different screens. There's no going four, five, six layers deep into different menus like people do today. I call it um, uh, the old way of doing it when you had to go to all these different submenus. You'd kind of get vertigo within the menu structure. And you'd get lost. You're like, where am I? I don't even know how to get back to where I started. And on the speed set, nothing is more than one or two layers deep in order to get to where you need to program it. So it's it's super easy. Let's talk about the autom automation pass through that you decided to put on the underneath the controller itself. Why would you? Why why is that a feature that Jandy integrated into the speed set? So we heard from a lot of servicers when we talked to them, and this was not. We didn't even ask the question. We heard from a lot of service pros that um, when they go out to service a pool, when a pool has automation, they really, they typically don't want to deal with the automation system because A, there's a lot of different automation systems out there. So they, all their techs would need to know the different automation systems. Um, so it's another thing for them to learn. Um, when they are touching the automation system, it's a chance for them to A, either put something in the wrong mode and not know that they've gone into that mode, or when they go into, say, the service mode, a lot of times they would forget to put it back into normal operating mode where they would leave this job site. So they asked for a way, can you give me a local program, a local controller that lets me bypass the automation system? We came up with a, a pretty, pretty simple but valuable tool for those service people. You connect automation to the back of the of this speed set. As soon as speed set sees any automation commands coming over the over that that line it will go into automation mode and the, everything on the controller is locked out you can't go into the menu you can't can't really do anything the only thing that works is a stop button now when you hit stop it will take the pump away from the automation system you can go and do your various maintenance things on the pool pad and then say you add chemicals a lot of times we hear that's one of the last things i do on the job site i add the chemicals and I want the pump to run at a higher speed for a couple of hours to circulate those chemicals. So once you have hit stop on the speed set, you can then run either the clean mode or there's two other timed runs, a time run one or time run two that you can program, whatever those you want those speed and durations to be. It will run that cycle. And when it's done, it will go back to automate auto mode and it will reconnect to the automation system. So you actually don't remember, you don't need to remember to, to put it back in that mode. 
the uh, speed set controller does it for you and reconnects to automation. So it's a time saver and it's uh, potentially um, a way to avoid making mistakes at a, at a homeowner's pool. Yeah, and I've never left the pool in service mode, Steve, just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> it happens all the time. Yeah, uh, yeah. The buttons are really, let's talk about the buttons that you mentioned, the clean button, the one and two. I think for me, the stop button is one of the, the best things you've done on this pump because a lot of the manufacturers put a start stop button together. And this is where a lot of people leave their pump off and don't turn it on all week. It happens a lot. So having these buttons on the bottom makes it really easy to operate. So talk a little bit about those quick buttons one more time for the listener. You have the stop and then you have another button, which is the auto mode. And then you have the one the clean and one and two. And there's mm-hmm. actually a three and eight also um, they can go through. Yeah. So let me, I'll give you a quick summary. So obviously stop, stop is pretty obvious. And then auto mode is when the pump is in, it's going to run, it's going to run whatever you tell it to run on its daily schedule. So a start time, an end time, and a, a speed that it should run at. You can have up to 10 different schedules within that auto mode. And um, you can have um, the schedules can even overlap. So, for example, say you are going to run a booster pump at some point during the day. Um, you could have your normal filtration cycle be 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., but then you could throw in a booster pump cycle from 9 to 10 at a higher speed, and the higher speed will always take precedence whenever there's two schedules that overlap. And then we've given you on the button bar, what was what we, we call it, you have a, a quick access to a clean mode, uh, speed one or speed two, and you can use those for whatever you want. We call them timed runs. And whenever those timed runs are complete, it'll go back to auto mode. You know, you could have a, a valve that you turn to drive a waterfall and then you press the number one button and it will run at a higher speed to drive that waterfall for the time that you want and so forth. We gave people three through eight as what we call virtual timed runs. So 90% of the people out there are probably never going to need them. But I love the phrase, it's better to have them and uh, not need them than to need them and not have them. So within the menu button, uh, menu access, you can actually go in and and program in those virtual speeds three through eight, and you access them through the menu as opposed to the buttons. So one thing that we were very deliberate about, this controller does have a a lid on it, and you can, can close the lid and it will hide the screen. But we left those buttons still available, and there was a, a couple of reasons. For the for the homeowner just walking by their pump, we wanted them to be able to see just at a glance, hey, is my pump running? So if they see the stop button is on and it's lit up red, it's very obvious, hey, my pump's not even going to run. If uh, it's in auto mode, the auto light will be green, so you know it's running, a, a, the it's in the auto mode. And then same thing, you've probably noticed when you hit the clean one or two button, those buttons light up. So in looking at our controller, our JEPR, and other controllers in the market, we realized, look, there's always multiple lights lit up, and it's hard to tell what, what light is telling me what's happening. So we never wanted more than one light to be lit up at any given time. So it's always very clear to the homeowner or the service person arriving at the job site, what is the what mode is the pump in? I think that's a big selling point for the Pool Pro because homeowners, I'm not to say that they don't make any, Pool Pros don't make the same, the same mistakes, but homeowners tend to make a lot of mistakes with their VS pumps. But they don't work with them every day, day in and day out. And it's it's normal. It's nothing against anybody. It's just that if you don't use them all the time, you're going to make a mistake eventually. So having the button so clear and simple just eliminates that user error that can happen. And let's just switch over to the Flow Pro pump itself with the speed set. Some of the nice features. And one of the things I really like, if it's a standalone pump, a lot of times when you're installing a salt system or booster pump, you have to have the timer still, the intermatic timer it's really complicated to control those because they're they're wired directly into the timer or they have their own timer. And a lot of times they won't run when the pump's running. It's a real mess. And so the two auxiliaries on the back of the Flow Pro, for a standalone installation, I think for the Pro, this is something that we can discuss in detail because it eliminates that problem that I just mentioned. Yeah, exactly. You know, we, we, we advertise it as kind of a basic automation system built into the pump. The reality is, is it's a it's a safety convenience feature from a programming standpoint. You know, if you have a whether it's a single speed pump or a variable speed pump, but you also have a booster pump or a saltwater chlorinator, you always need to if you program them independently of each other, you always need to make sure that, hey, the booster pump can't run unless the main filtration pump is running. 
the saltwater chlorinator should not be running if water is not moving so you don't build up chlorine gas at the saltwater chlorinator. Uh, we, we launched that, uh, that platform about four years ago with the two auxiliary relays. And um, it's basically a, a foolproof way to you run the power for the booster pump through the pump itself. And unless that pump is running and is running at a speed high enough to give enough flow for the booster pump, that booster pump will never go on. So you're protecting the equipment and you're simplifying the programming by having it all tied into one location. Same thing for the saltwater chlorinator. You just, you, the saltwater chlorinator won't run unless the pump is at a certain speed. What I like about the speed set is that you can actually access it auxiliary one and auxiliary two and change the RPM when they turn on and off. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So that's what's, that's what's funny. You know, four years ago when we launched that platform, the very first thing people asked was, can I change the speeds at which those turn on and off? And we're, we're like, uh, not yet. It's in our it's in our plans. Now it took us three years to do it, but now you can now change those speeds. So if you only need 1500 RPM instead of 1750 RPM in order to get enough flow rate for your saltwater chlorine air, you can now turn that uh, change that auxiliary relay one speed and and have your saltwater chlorine air kick on at a lower speed, and then you're saving the homeowner money by having it be at a, at a lower speed. And then the wiring is very simple. I like the fact the whole back of the pump technically comes off and you have all the wires and you can wire everything pretty simple. Yeah, look, I have, uh, let's call them, uh, let's call them fat fingers. So I've, I've had to wire things in small compartments, whether it's pumps or just at home doing, you know, lighting in my home, you always get these little tiny junction box and it's really hard to, to get the wire ties on and to get a screwdriver in there and, and tighten down the terminals. So we gave, uh, we gave people on this pump platform a very large wiring compartment where it's really easy to get stuff in. There's room to navigate the wires. And these pumps also are totally enclosed, fan cooled, so they're gonna last a very long time, not like the older pumps where the elements would be a factor. Yeah, so, uh, so not only are it, on this platform, the DB2A platform, not only is it a TEFC motor, but it's also a zero, uh, it's a zero clearance fan cooled motor, which means that um, you can butt the, um, the fan right up against, say, a foundation or a fence. And the, the way we did that is we designed the fan so it pulls in the air from the, the sides of the fan shroud as opposed to coming directly from the back, which is what all the, uh, all the other pumps in the market t do today. So it saves you a couple of inches of, of space that you don't need. And I think, you know, just talking from the installation standpoint, this is the base that comes in the box for the pump that you can use to replace other pumps that are at different levels really saves the pool pro because you know the inlet inlet doesn't match up a lot of times and you're doing some creative plumbing so jandy thinks of every aspect of the install not only the ease of wiring a salt system or booster pump but also putting the pump in and and having the inlet, inlet line up yeah, so look, out, out of the box, the dimensions of the Flow Pro, um, the inlet port is at the same center height as the the inlet port of a Hayward um, super pump. And then the uh, pressure side port um, or outlet port on the pump also lines up. So it's uh, basically a direct drop and replacement for a super pump out of the box. Um, we have the unionized fittings. So any little micro adjustments you need to make on like the, the forward or af after position of the um, of the pump you can do to get that the pressure side port to line up. And then um, similarly, the um, if you use the small base with the spacers that comes with the pump, that will line up with any Pentair Whisper Flow or IntelliFlow pump. So it's uh, super convenient from a drop and replacement standpoint, especially in the aftermarket now where a lot of the single speed pumps are gone. Um, if you're replacing the whisper flow, you've got to go to variable speed. So uh, we've now given you an option. Look, you can move over to a Jandy VS Flow Pro, use the, the adjustable base that comes with the pump, and you've replaced your Pentair whisper flow pump single speed without having to do any kind of replumbing. And I think that's definitely the convenience factor of that is something that a lot of manufacturers don't think about because with the new Department of Energy regulations, single speed pumps are being replaced at a record rate at this point. And for the installer, it just makes it so simple. And we can transition a little bit. I don't think we sh can give a talk about a barrel speed pump without talking about the benefits of it for the listener. A lot of new pool pros don't really know about the benefits. They just think it's a fancy pump or it's something that they have to sell because the government is regulating to a certain degree what we can sell people. But there are real benefits to a barrel speed pump besides you know, the convenience of connecting things to auxiliary relays. 
why don't you go over some of the actual benefits of the pumps? Yeah, you know, the the biggest thing, um, in in my opinion, and I think most people in the industry would say this is the energy savings. Uh, obviously, single speed pumps. It's called single speed because it just turns on and runs at its fastest speed possible, which is thirty four fifty RPM. So if it's a pump that draws, I'm just going to throw a number out there. If it's a pump that draws two thousand watts, it is going to um, cost a lot of money to run. If you're running it for eight hours or ten hours, it's always pulling its full maximum load. If you replace that pump with a variable speed pump, the easiest example to give people is um, run that pump at half speed. If you run it at half speed, you're going to get half the amount of flow. So you need you typically need to run it a little bit longer to get the same turnover rate. But when you run it at half speed, you're actually drawing about 85% less power than at full speed. Um, so it's super counterintuitive to what an, the average person that doesn't stand ele- understand electricity or variable speed motors and how they function. But run that pump at half speed and you save the homeowner a tremendous amount of money. Even if you run it twice as much time, you're still saving them 75 percent of what they would normally pay. So that, in, in my opinion, is the biggest payoff. I think over the past five to seven years, the industry has done a really good job of educating people on that. I think secondary to that is the noise. Obviously, running something at full speed, you're going to get hydraulic noise. You're going to get uh, motor noise. Run it at half speed. You're going to annoy your um, your neighbors a lot less. Um, you're going to annoy your own family a little bit less by that motor not being um, anywhere near as loud. So, the, it, again, in my opinion, those are the two major, major benefits. I guess since you're not running it at full speed all the time, it's going to last longer just by logic, right? Yep. So the extra cost of the pump pays for itself and energy savings. Of course, you can have a party out there. You don't even know the pump's running. I think, to be honest, Jandy is the quietest pump out there. I have two myself, and the quietness of these pumps are just like humming back there. So it's it's just a really amazing decibel drop when you have a rail speed pump. So you have different models. So let's just go over, and this is a question I get a lot from homeowners and pool pros. Hey, I have a one horsepower pump. Which VS pump should I get? Or another one would say, I have a 1.5 horsepower pump. Should I get a 2.7 or a 1.85 or 1.65? So what are some of the factors for the total horsepower that they should be looking at when replacing their single speed pump? Well, it's just, there's two ways you can do it. The the way I always recommend is um, they should they should somehow calculate the, the TDH in the system, um, whether it's through... Um, you know, connecting gauges and then looking at the calculating out with the TDHs and looking at pump curves. But let's assume that the the homeowner or the the service person is very happy with how the pool is operating with their one horsepower pump. Then I would say, you know, uh, Jandy has a, a VS Flow Pro 1.65 and a 1.85. Either one of those is going to replace a a one to one and a half horsepower single speed pump. If you get up to a two or two and a half horsepower single speed pump, you've got the RVS Flow Pro 2.7. Uh, one thing we did to help remove some of the confusion is we do actually, we just started what we call our, our drop in a Jandy campaign. So we have a little guide that if you um, are interested in replacing your Hayward or Pantera single speed pump with one of our VS Flow Pros, we actually give you a chart of every single Pantera Super, uh, Pantera Whisper Flow and Hayward super pump model. And we tell you, look, if you've got this pump that you're pulling out, put this Jandy VS Flow Pro in its place um, and it'll be a, a, a replacement for it. That removes a lot of the guesswork. I think one thing that a lot of people don't understand is that with single speed pumps, there's been this game the industry has played for decades about max rated horsepower, full rated horsepower, and it can be really confusing. So we try to remove some of that guesswork by providing that list of people to people so they know what to replace it with. And where's that list available at? Um, so if you go on, on jandy.com and look for um, drop in a jandy, um, you'll find it at um, a lot of the distribution locations. We have um, displays set up with these uh, with these drop in guides that you can actually take one and carry it with you and you'll, you'll always have it with you. You'll also see in uh, distribution these days, we have counter mats out. So you're up at the counter placing your order. We actually have a little, the, the guide is right there that shows you what to what to use to replace it. And I, I guess we should touch on this before we end. It's not something new to the industry, but the dual voltage ability of these pumps. So a lot of people have older equipment pads running at 115 volts. They're using a one horsepower pump, probably in most cases. So it doesn't really matter what voltage the equipment pad is running on. These pumps will automatically modulate the voltage and switch 
the VS Flow Pro, again, the, the DV2A models are 115 volt, 230 volt compatible. You don't need to f turn any switches. You don't need to uh, move a, a, a dip switch setting anywhere. Um, the pump auto senses what the incoming voltage is, is and accounts for it. The one thing that sets us apart from our competitors that offer dual voltage motors or dual voltage pumps is that, um, for example, on our 1.85 VS Flow Pro, you get the same performance at 115 volts as you get at 230 volts. On the 2.7 horsepower model, it does something what we call D rates a little bit at 115 volts. Um, above 3000 RPM, you don't, you don't get the same performance that you get. But on uh, a lot of our competitors, if you look at the pump curves that they publish at 115 volts, you will see at 115 volts, their pumps perform maybe about half as well at 200 than they do at 230 volts. So from a uh, hydraulic performance perspective, we, um, we're we a market leader in that area. Yeah, I gotta tell you, Steve, I've never forgot to flip a switch when I was installing a pump and change the voltage. So that's never happened to me. Never, no one ever does that. Yeah. Actually, the one time I, I did it, not, it was a while ago, the smoke from the motor set me off that I had something, something was wrong with my installation. It started smoking and I was like, oh, I think I forgot to flip the switch. Yeah, yeah it's something as simple as that. It's, you know, again, we, we go back to what makes it easiest for the professional out there that needs to do this and make, is, make everything auto sense as much as possible. Yeah, so I thank you for your time. I think you've covered everything in great detail for the listener and the Pool Pro, and I, I think there's a reason why Jandy has a huge following out there of Pool Pros. You're always innovating, and you're always thinking about how to make things easier for us because we have so many other things that we have to worry about at the pool, the filter, the heater, you know, all the other things, that the chemistry of the pool. And if you could just simplify one thing for us so that we just go back there and it's, we don't have to put our thinking cap on, I think that just makes our job a lot easier. So we re really appreciate the engineering effort that Jandy puts into all their products, but especially the VS pumps to make it really easy for the employee to operate it and for us to just go back there and, and push a simple button to get it going. Yeah, you know, we, we always think about that, um, the service companies, especially, you know, the, the, the larger ones where it's hard to find good employees, there's turnover, you have 20 or 30 people running routes for you, and um, you've got maybe five of them that are really, really solid and everybody else needs to lean on them. So if you can make those other, um, that other 75% of somebody's staff almost as productive as your top performers, yeah. then you've got, you've got a much smoother operating service company. I put a play on your last name. I always use Mr. Jones account and you can tell the employee, when you go to Mr. Jones account, the vacuum, the pool, just hit the clean button and start vacuuming. That's something yep. simple. Exactly. So I appreciate your time, Steve, and thank you again. All right, appreciate it. If you're looking for the page that Steve was referring to, the drop in Jandy, where it talks about the pump charts and which pumps you can replace with the Jandy Flow Pro, what's the direct replacement, you could just type into Google drop in Jandy and you'll actually be taken to that page. It's pretty easy. And then you just put your email address in and you can download the PDF form. And it's definitely a very handy guide. If you're looking for other podcasts I've recorded, you can go to my website, swimmingprolearning.com. And on the banner, click on the podcast icon. That will take you to a drop-down menu of other podcasts I've recorded. And if you're interested in the coaching program, you can learn more at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a good rest of your week, and God bless. Pool Service Pro. Open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's Referral Program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro.